Welcome to our podcast. This is Friends on Fire. I'm Mike. I'm a lifelong devotee of financial independence. I even wrote a book about it. And I'm Maggie, a newer convert, but just as passionate, especially on the intersection of minimalism and financial independence. Well, one in the same. We are two like-minded friends who believe that talking about money with your friends and family opens the door to financial well-being. The Friends on Fire podcast is about dispelling myths, building financial acumen, and sharing your financial independence journey with the people you care about. This is Friends on Fire. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Maggie. Mike, I didn't say your name. Happy New Year, Mike. <laughs> well, there's only one other person here. I, I know. know who you're talking well, to. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I might have been talking to myself, you know. Um, it's a new year. Mm -hmm. uh, I just can't. It's, I don't know. I was about to make some comment about how long or short or what. I don't know what this year has been, but it's been uh, interesting. And I just can't believe it's already 2023. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, I think all years are kind of like this. In some ways, it went really fast. Some ways, it went really slow. Yeah. I feel like for some reason, the last week of the year, like the, the week between Christmas and New Year's, for some reason, felt like the beginning of 2023 to me. I don't know why. Like, I had just gotten back from a trip. I just, I feel like I'm already like a week into the New Year is my point. I feel that way, too. Definitely. Yeah. The day after Christmas is basically the new year. Yeah, it all it all starts over. So we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, a bunch of, you know, like what we've been up to, what we're excited about for 2023, some of our intentions and goals, how we're going to try to make those stick. And, you know, we'll mix in some financial reminders because sometimes I have to remind myself this is a financial podcast. Yep. <laughs> now, before we get into all that stuff. I think it's a good opportunity to congratulate each other on a fourth year of podcasting. Happy anniversary. I mean, it's like kind of funny that on cue, I'm like mid yawn while you're saying that. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a long four years, Mike, yeah. or a long, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a long three years at the beginning of the fourth year. Yeah, I, I was realizing that too. I had to do the math on my, I had to count on my fingers like I often do. And be like, wait, is this? Our, I thought it was our third year at first. And I I'm definitely like, no, lost just, track. I sometimes think it's yeah. our second year because we were in, we are yeah. in between 100 well, and 200 episodes. 2020 was a crazy year. Nobody can remember anything from that year. Um, yeah, and I had to count and be like, yeah, we just finished three full years, so mm -hmm. this is the first week of our fourth year. So yeah, happy anniversary! Yeah, Mike. we are toddler podcasters now. We are. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to kindergarten next year. You know. Yeah. Looking forward to being fully potty trained. Actually, I think I think I should be potty trained at four. So, right now, Maggie, that is a wonderful anniversary to celebrate. But there is an even more important anniversary to celebrate. Do you know what it is? Is it that we're entering my first year full full time, first full time year of early retirement? Because if not, I thought this was like all about me. No, what no, else could it be? No, no, no. Nobody cares about that. Uh, what my else car be? is turning 20. Oh, yeah. that's like a big. This was my goal. Has, I wanted to keep it for 20 years. Your car almost has kept a career for longer than I have. Mm -hmm. Certainly he stayed at the same job or she. I don't remember what pronoun we put on her. I think you made it a she. They, they stayed at the same job for longer than I could stay at one job. I only made it 15 yeah. years at the same company. But my car only works part-time. I drive 500 that's, miles a year. That's fair. Very, <laughs> very part-time. Very part-time. Part-time and sort of like half-ass in it. You know, like, yeah. does, it, fact, does it have I like... I my car semi-retired 10 years you're, ago. <laughs> you're right. You're, you're, your car kind of quietly quit as, they, as that term became popular this year. Yeah. Uh, quietly quit and was like, you can either drive the car or run the air conditioning, but not both at the same time. Yes, you exactly. Cho you choose your priorities. Um, okay. Hey, what did you, what did you like a uh, quick, quick reminiscing on like your holiday break? You know, you had a couple weeks off work. What, what'd you get up to? Um, it was fairly uneventful. So we typically go to Germany for Christmas. And this year, because we'd spent so long over in Germany this summer, we decided to just stay home and relax. And so we had a lot of family time, watched a lot of Christmas movies, you know, went on lots of walks. We took the kids to go see a show. You know that show Shen Yun, the Chinese dance thing? 
I've been getting flyers for that show for yeah. about as old as your car is. I know. And we finally decided to go. And it was really you, good. You the go kids by yourself? loved it. You took your kids. Okay. Yeah. So the four of us went. Where Where was it? The like, Atlanta Symphony. Oh. But it was cool. It was the first yeah. time we've taken the kids to a show like that. And it was a little challenging for them to sit still for two hours. But they, they did it and they had a great time. It, correct me if I'm wrong. Are the tickets to that free? No, they're expensive. Oh, for some you reason, think because I, always, I went, it's free. Ugh, I'm so offended. But there are flyers that would always come to the house about it, and I always thought it was like a free event. Like, no, I don't it's know just why. heavily advertised. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Sometimes when something's so heavily advertised, I'm like confused, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this is. I'm not gonna go. We also took the time to wrap up a lot of house projects. We finished up all of our travel planning for next year and um, kind of checked off a bunch of to do's around the house. So it was it was fun. It was relaxing. It was very productive, which is fulfilling for both Britta and I. So it's great. Great break. Hey, I'm with you. I love a good productive mm-hmm. uh, couple weeks off work. What about you, Maggie? Well, my breaks are they feel so different now because they're kind of when like everyone else is off now, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm, I'm like off all the time now, you know, and so it's, it's different. It's like uh, we had a really good time. It was we had a week in San Diego visiting a couple different for a few different friends. And that was like really fun. And just again, I'm still getting used to the dynamic of what vacation feels like when you're not leaving from and going back to work afterwards it's just better i don't really know a great way to say it it's just really nice like you just at least for me for the for the way i am where it's hard for me to uh relax sometimes and and kind of be in the moment because i'm just very uh wound up and wired it it just really makes like I enjoy vacations like that much more. So like we had a great vacation in San Diego. We it was without the kids for a week. We just got to hang out with some people we really enjoy spending time with. Some of them listen to this podcast. So shout out to uh, if you were one of the people we were hanging out with in San Diego. Um, and we just had a really great time. And then we came home and we had, you know, a week and a half with the kids. Um, and lovely you know belated we didn't have them for christmas this year so we had a little little bit of a late christmas but everybody was just in a good mood it was great vibes around the house it was a good mix of relaxing and doing some fun stuff and outings and um, we just had a really good time and it was really nice now your comment about vacations are more fun now that you don't have a job to leave and then come back to but wouldn't you say that everything is better because you don't have a stressful job to leave and then come back to like yeah. intermingled with all your activities? Uh, that that would be a fair statement. I'm still adjusting to retired life and, and I'm not fully adjusted, if that makes sense. And so I like vacations still feel good because I'm I've been doing so much, you know, when I'm not on vacation. I'm still doing a lot, even in retired life. Um, and I just sort of, you know, quit thinking about any of that stuff because all the stuff I'm leaving behind is like things that are kind of on my own terms and somewhat my own deadlines. And they're a lot easier to leave behind than work was. Um, but yeah, you're right. Everything is everything is more enjoyable lately. Yeah. But speaking of more enjoyable, I'm actually like super excited for 2023. And I think it is just, I think it's related to it being, you know, it's been an interesting transition easing into, it's, just, it's a big life shift and transition. So I don't ever want to be like, oh, my life's so tough. I, you know, don't have to work. Um, but it, it is, it's a big transition, right? It's just, it's an emotional transition. It's a physical transition of just the structure in our lives is is uh, different and changed. You know, financially, everything's different now. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've talked about it a few times. I've been going through a lot of feelings and transitions and, and just lots learnings. Lots of feelings. Yeah, lots of feelings. Um, and I was just thinking about this year. 2023 for anyone who is unfamiliar with which year we're currently in it's it's new so you might not realize we switched over and i'm just like super excited and motivated and i'm just like it's like like last year at this time i was like oh i got six months more of work to get through and then i gotta you know whatever and it's like i got a whole year this is my first full year of retirement and i'm just really excited for like 
from everything from travel to stuff the kids have going on to different volunteer opportunities I'm involved with to just like getting crap done that I want to get done. Like I'm just really, I just have like a really good mentality going into this year and I'm excited. I am also excited for your year because it is a fiscal year in addition to a calendar year. And so all of the, like the great tracking and analysis that can be done you now get to do with a full year of retirement. So in 22, you still, you and Greg were still working. You were getting paid. You got your deferred comp, but it was like intermingled with your, um, your normal W2 income. And then this year, this is going to be your steady state income for a while from your DCP. You're going to get to see how your medical insurance worked out. You're going to get to see what the tax implications are going to be like. You're going to get to see what your steady state spending is going to be, hopefully, unless you buy another car. And uh, and you will get a very good picture of what your life is going to look like and what trend you're going to have for early retirement. I I think it's thrilling. That's a good point. It's I think it's funny and fitting that you're most excited about the fiscal year of of a full retired year. And I, I am, I mean, I'm joking. I am also like, I, I, this year financially was like super messy. It's hard to get a good track on anything. And it, and at some point, and we'll talk about this either in next week's episode or the next week's episode, but we're going to do a full 2022 spending recap and holy crud, did we spend a lot of money in 2022. And at some point I just sort of like, I was like, fuck it. I really did. I just was just like, I don't know. This is my last year making money. I, don't, I just want to like live it up. And I had that response like while traveling, post traveling over the holiday, just, you know, on a, I was going to say on like a three day weekend, but every day was a day off. So I just had that response a lot and it'll come through in our spending recap. (laughs) Um, So I am, I'm excited for like a clean year where I'm a little bit more motivated. I'm still going to splurge on things because that's my style, but, and what I value, but I am excited for like a clean fiscal year where even just me like making better decisions when I can see it in a clean year, I'm a little bit more motivated to to uh, stick to um, some spending goals and um, some other things. So, so let's jump in to 2023, Mike. Like, what are your intentions and goals for the year? Like, personal, finance, fiscal, whatever you know, fiscal, financial, whatever words you want to use. Um, and I think we should you should go first because I'm always a little. You know, I got I got a lot to say, so I'll fill up whatever time you leave me. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, I think before I start, it's worth saying that when we first met or like six months after we met, remember what I wrote on your whiteboard? Bali 2023. That's right. So we had this idea that in 2023 we were going to take the summer off and if they didn't let us, we were going to quit and retire then and we were going to go to Bali. This was pre-COVID. Yeah. And to we, be clear, with our families. With it our families. Sound like, we were, it may yeah, sound like we're, we're going to run like, off together to run, Bali. Run off yeah. together and leave our, leave our yeah. families and our spouses. Yes, thank you. Family trip. We are now at that point that we, we were kind of envisioning our lives were going to, to get to. Now, the interesting thing is that COVID accelerated all this. And I think we found yeah. a lot of benefits from that. And, and I've said on the show that COVID like worked out pretty well for me. You know, I, I, I liked being away from people. I like working from home. I, I use this as an opportunity to travel more like this. This worked out really well for me. So it accelerated a lot of my plans. But I see 2023 as a really pivotal year for me because 2022 returned to normalcy. And I think 23 will be normal. And I am interested to see if a normal year is good enough for me. And what I mean by normal year Mm -hmm. is like the years I've had the past couple years where I'm, I like my job. I, I, I get a lot of satisfaction from doing it, but still, it's still work. Is that balance going to change? I'm still taking the summers off. Are they going to let me keep doing that? And will those trips continue to be so enjoyable for me? And then what else does this kind of, what does three years of doing this look like? Do I start to like want more or want something different? And so I, for some reason, and it's hard for me to articulate it, I see this year as a really pivotal year in this 
designing of my life. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. That's so interesting you say that, Mike. I also couldn't really put words to it, but I kind of know what you mean on like just just this will be an, it's just that it's going to be an interesting year. Um, and it's it's going to be, I mean, I think back to like your, I totally forgot about that until you asked what you wrote on my whiteboard. I still have pictures uh, before I said my final goodbye to that office and whiteboard. I uh, took some pictures of where it said Bali 2023. That seemed like so far off at the time too, mm-hmm. uh, which I know was not your point. I was just circling back around to that. But okay. So what do you think, uh, what's your like intentions for, aside from this feeling you have about the year? What are your intentions for 2023? By the way, before you, I'm, I'm not going to even let you say them yet, Mike. Okay. I just want to note, I'm really digging the word intentions over goals lately. Okay. I'm just letting you know that. Keep going. What are your intentions? <laughs> well, I guess I like both of them. Uh, I have intentions and goals. My intentions are to have amazing family trips. The, the trips last year were just incredible. It is it is the lifestyle I want. It is the experiences that my family enjoys. I mean, that is what I want with my life. And we've fully planned out our next set of trips. We're going to go to Colorado, Norway, Sweden, and Japan. And we're going to you know spend months away from home. So my intention is to continue to make that the primary focus of my life. My goals are ones that I can track and measure. And I want to reduce my spending because even though I had a pretty frugal year, I still did not meet my spending goals. And, and we spent, um, ironically, the, the same amount we did last year, despite despite a goal, just in different categories. So I want to reduce my spending. I want to grow my net worth by my normal 15%. And again, did not hit that goal for this year. I also want to, you know, in the same vein of lifestyle planning, I want to help Britta design, continue to design her job to better align with our family values and and goals, which is travel more in the summer, generally work less. You know, she she works for a great German company. She loves the work, but she manages a team. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's not like ideal for taking summers off like my job. It takes work. You know, it's not doesn't lend itself to that type of lifestyle, but I want to help her with that. Um, because I've been able to make it work at my job, you know, fingers crossed it will still be able is to do that. She, is she receptive to wanting that help? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. I was just checking. <laughs> that's the magic. That's the magic formula. You want to help and she wants the help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, okay. she wants this. And you know, the, I think the difference is I, I've been working, I've been in leadership roles for a long time. I've been working for large corporations for a long time. Like I understand how a lot of these things work and how people work within organizations. And so, and I've also like, I've done this at my job. And so I'm now want to help her do more of this at her job and her job's already super flexible. She gets like, you know, six weeks off for vacation a year. I mean, it's like, this is a European company. It's a great deal. Yeah. I think the difference will be you were willing to walk away over it. And is she willing to walk away over over a no? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have, yeah. To, I have to convince her not to walk away all the time. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. She's not. Uh, she really does enjoy her job. Britt and I disagree about little stuff all the time. But I think with the big things, we are very much aligned. We want to we want to work less. We want to spend more time with our kids. We want to travel the world. I mean, that is that is what yeah. we want. That's awesome. Additionally, I really want to plan an epic 2024. I don't know why. Like, I I think just because when I plan like, 2020. Like a trip or the entire year? A uh, trip. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Like I was like, really I was like, long. Like, I thought you were like, I'm going to plan. I was like, you're going to plan out all 365 days of 2024. That's your goal. In no. Fascinating. <laughs> Tell me more. So I planned 23, like mid 2022. And we had already picked out the trips in early 22. So this is like well before I even took last summer off. So now I'm at the point where I'm like, you know, I can start thinking a little bit further ahead and I really want to do something that's just spectacular. Like Bali 2024. Yeah, Bali 2024. And then I also want to do some smaller trips because I I get very focused on large, long international trips and we typically don't have kind of the interest or the energy to do smaller weekend trips with the family, even though when we do them, they're great fun. And so I just need to remind myself that like we can and should do those things and try to pick some more of them. I like it. Yeah. That's really it for me. I mean, like things are, 
I, I'm happy with like myself personally. I'm happy with work. I'm happy with my family life. There isn't a whole lot of like little, you know, developmental things that I, I want to do. And like, you know, typically we've had some goals on that in the past uh, years on this podcast. Uh, I really, I'm really focusing on designing a life for the long term. I like it. Will you, or sorry, have you set any financial goals? Like typically you have like, I'm going to spend 15, 15% less than last yeah. year. Like 15% reduction in spending, 15% growth in net worth. Well, you have that every year. Yeah. It's my, my goal every year. Okay. How do you keep getting down 15% every year? You're going to end up at nothing eventually. Well, the thing is, it's interesting you say that. Because I do find it reminds me that I need to continually find areas to reduce my spending because like, you know, we talk about inflation all the time, but there's also like stuff costs less. There are certain categories of spending that will continue to cost less over time because the technology gets cheaper, the availability that, you know, the supply of materials gets cheaper. And so like I need to be constantly looking for ways to reduce my spending in the areas I can, because inevitably there's going to be increases in spending that I can't control. And if I can reduce my overall spending, that's great. If I keep it flat, that's a success. So when I look back at my spending this year, and we'll talk about this in our next episode, it was basically flat year over year, but inflation was huge. And so the fact that I could spend the same amount of money be very happy, do all the stuff I wanted to do, and and it didn't cost me anything more, that's a big success. I agree. Okay, what else? I feel like I got a laundry list of some goals and intentions this year. Like, there's nothing else that's on your mind. Not that there needs to be, because I like that you're kind of like, you're optimized. You just want to keep keep (laughs) doing it, you know? Um, I'd like to read 35 books. I, I want to read less. I, I feel like I'm getting too too sucked into the competition with you and I want to lower my target. Oh, that's a good target. I mean, that's a good goal to, to not even challenge me because you know you'll lose. So just give, <laughs> just, I like how you've just given up at the beginning of the year. It's great. Well, if I remember correctly, you also don't track them very well and you are including no. books you read in no, previous just, years. And so no, I just went, read the wrong number to you. <laughs> track them very well. All I've I'm saying is I can't. Reads. I can't trust your reporting on this. You can't beat me is what you're saying. And let me just give you an update. By the way, I'm going to have to add in the book that I will have finished this week. So I have my actual 2022 reads, 53 books for the year. Impressive. Yeah. All right, Maggie. Let me, let me get comfortable. (sighs) Hit me with your laundry list. You got, um, You're just going to put yourself on mute and settle in for a little while, Mike. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So I tried to like bucket mine because I really, I I will say like my mind is racing with intentions for the year, right? And some of it is related to, I really had this quote like bucket list for fire, for retirement. And I thought I was going to get so much done. And I've I've gone through these interesting uh, just revelations that I don't have as much time or I, I I have not had as much time as I thought I would have true kind of quote free time to pursue all these things. I've still had plenty of time and obviously more time than when I had a very demanding job, but it's just not the same. Like it's, it's quick. It's crazy how kind of quickly it's gotten sucked into various things. So my point is I have, my eyes are always bigger than my stomach. Like I always have, I always think I can do more. I was, I've, I've just always been like that. It's uh what keeps me motivated and a fairly productive person. So I I bucketed some things here into some themes of like what I'm really caring about being intentional about this year. So my first, and these are in like buckets and then they're in pairs. Okay. So like uh, strap in because there's a, there's a lot, I I really need like a diagram to draw here for you to understand the, the concentric overlapping circles of these categories. I'm in the middle of all of them, me and me and uh, world peace and happiness. Um, okay, so I'm I'm like half joking, but not really. Okay, the first two are home and travel, and and I like those together because I'm really enjoying spending time at home, and I'm spending a lot more time at home, like literally in my home. And one of my big retirement goals that I've just not been motivated to deal with in 2022, but I am hear me now, this is happening in 2023, is like really further minimizing the stuff I own and really having my house the way I want it. To quote it from a book I recently finished, which is uh, called Buy Yourself the Fucking Lilies, 
um, which is a great book, by the way, covers a little bit of financial stuff, but it's just a, a great general book. Um, I want my house to be like dinner party ready is the term she uses. And it, and it doesn't mean I'm about to host a dinner party, uh, but it means that I'm just, my home is always the way I want it to be. Cause I am just one observation that I've learned about myself over the years. I'm happier when my home is organized and minimalist and clean and just everything's where it belongs. And I'm unhappy when it's not. And I want to further minimize. So that's a big, like just some kind of finessing of some things around the house is a, a big goal of mine. On the flip side, I'm also happy when I'm not home and I'm traveling. So similar to you, we've already booked a lot of our travel for 2023. Uh, we got trips booked to Seattle, Martha's Vineyard, and uh, Providence, Rhode Island, Scotland, and the UK in the summer with the kids, New Orleans for FinCon. Um, and then we've got another like three plus weeks actually without the kids that we um, still are, have like TBD of like some Greg and I will go on some trips, hopefully in at least one international trip in there. Um, and so uh, we're, I'm just excited to, to keep traveling. We got a lot of travel in uh, more than usual in 2022 because of our big um, six week European adventure last year. Um, but I'm just excited. I'm going to keep up with the travel hacking too. And so I got a lot of, a lot of uh, exciting travel ahead and, and more to um, come. I don't nearly have all mine booked. I've got a lot of flights booked, but like the way you have kind of everything is like pretty much done. I'm not anywhere near there. So I got to finish that up. So Maggie, do you want to set another point school with me? Um, yeah, we didn't really like someone actually asked me about our point school, by the way. I figured it was so clear that we met our goal because in the last episode that was, you know, months ago, we said that we were within like 50,000 of hitting. We, we, we surpassed our goal, right? Like no, no, no. Both, at, at that time, we had surpassed it by hundreds oh, you're of thousands right. you're of right. miles. We had surpassed it then, which is why I think when someone asked me, I was like, oh yeah, I haven't really like given another update because we already beat it in like Q3. Yeah. Yeah, um, we no, crushed right. it. I couldn't even so remember. do you want to do it again? 500,000? Um, yeah. Do you think I, I'm not sure when I'm going to like run out of people wanting to give me credit cards. But yeah, I think I could do it. All right, let's do it. I think soon I'm going to get dinged. Like I've hit some limits in some places. I can't, I'm, I'm just shocked that American Express is still giving me credit cards. Hey, I don't think they care. I know. Yeah. You're spending um, money. <laughs> if you I'm, spend money like the way you're spending yeah. money, American well, Express is going to be throwing credit we'll cards We'll get to that. You. American Express upped my credit limit the other day and I was like, no, 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 no. I don't need you to, I appreciate the gesture. I don't have a job. Why are you upping my credit limit? Uh, probably because they saw I was spending insane amounts of money. All right. Done. 500,000. Okay. Thank you. I like it. Adding it. It's officially on here. Like I needed more goals this year. Um, okay. My other two little friendly pairs, health and wealth. Those rhyme. That's why they're a pair. Okay. So I've never been as excited by insurance as I am right now, Mike. I, I have so much to say. We're going to do a whole episode on this, but like, so health wise, I'm just excited. To have, I've, I'm like a big proponent of high deductible health insurance and HSAs. Love it. But it makes me treat doctors and things in a weird way because I, I get like really frugal about like not wanting to you're, when you when you have a high deductible plan, like you're paying out of pocket for everything except your routine visits. And so it makes me like not want to go to the doctor when I'm sick and just a bunch of things. And I don't really like love medicine. I'm getting off track. The point is, I haven't had insurance like we're going to have next year. Like right now we're paying like over fourteen hundred dollars a month for Cobra and it's ridiculous. So we're going to be paying. We've actually already signed up. We're on an Aetna plan. Our uh, post subsidy monthly cost, which we already paid for January, is $110 for the both of us. Our kids are being covered by the insurance of our exes. Now, keep in mind, they were on ours for 10 plus years. And so we're, you know, spreading the wealth. Um, and so I'm just really excited to have like awesome insurance that is really inexpensive. And let me give you an example of what I mean by awesome insurance. Cause like, do you get excited by insurance, Mike? No, I hate all insurances. Okay. I know you don't. Uh, I mean, I know you hate it. So this is what I'm talking about. Exciting insurance. Cause I, I ch we, we chose our plan very thoughtfully. And again, I'm going to do a whole episode on this. Cause I've, I've like hacked what is the healthcare system and learn the healthcare.gov site. I mean, and <laughs> not the whole healthcare system because that's unhackable. <laughs> and just crazy. Um, but I am going to start going back to therapy in 2023 and I'm excited. I love going to therapy. Have you ever gone to a therapist, Mike? Nope. Oh my God. 
I know I it's probably like your worst nightmare to like sit and have to pay someone to talk about your feelings. <laughs> I love it. I've I've gone on and off throughout my life, but like my therapist that I used to go to, she charges 200 and something an hour, right? And like I didn't think twice about that when I had a high paying job, but I do now and I'm like all this whole past year I'm like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I don't really need it. It's just a nice to have. But I like it. Guess what I will pay for therapy? I mean, I'm going to have to switch therapists, but I've I've already done some research and found some good ones. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars a session. Nice. That's awesome. That and that's a copay. Um, and so I'm just so excited to be able to. I know other people who have either free therapy or just like a low copay like that, and it's just such a nice benefit. It really should be provided to everyone, everywhere. But anyways, I'm super excited about insurance. Um, I want to recommit to going to therapy because I think it is a uh, good beneficial use of my time. Um, I want to recommit to meditating, which is my goal every year. And I'm always like, you know, I'm, I'm often on that um, track. Uh, you know, normal stuff of like, I want to eat more vegetables. Uh, I want to take better care of my skin. I'm, I'm becoming an old lady and I don't really like even use lotion. Like I just need to do basic things to take care of my aging skin. Mike, this is where you come in and you say, what are you talking about? I don't think you have any aging skin. What's your next one? Why is it so quiet? <laughs> yeah, that was actually kind of a funny reply. Um, uh, okay. You know, I still want to do pull-ups, you mm-hmm. know, like, I, so I want to get like physically stronger. And then I want more like quiet thinking time to myself. That's kind of in my health category. Okay. Let's skip to wealth. Cause I'm going to just pile through these. Cause I All got right. too many. I might be the only one in the world where one of my goals next year is to keep my income low. So I I'll, we'll go through this in the medical benefits one, but it behooves me to have a low uh, income uh, in terms of it keeps our insurance costs low. And quite honestly, I don't want to work. I'm not trying to work right now. I have to actually stop myself because my natural tendencies are to like get back into things that involve making money and working. And I don't want to. I am I'm in a phase of life where I am trying to not work and enjoy my life and not have things revolve around you know income and money coming in and so i want to keep my income low um i actually have a goal to spend 15 percent less than last than this year keep in mind i mean sorry spend 15 percent less than 2022 keep in mind 2022 i probably spent more than 15 percent more than 2021 it's like a it's like an easy comparable and the Tesla is not going to be in that number. So minus the Tesla from our full year of spending in 2022, I want to spend 15% less in 2023. I'm going to do a lot to optimize my taxes and like further learn how to do that in uh 2023. Um and just in general like kind of, you know, optimizing for my our new financial reality, which is this, you know, combination of wanting to, you know, minimize our income and minimize taxes and other things and just get, you know, as savvy as possible in the fact that we don't have jobs anymore and we need to make the money we have stretch as long as we can. So let's move to my third category. Okay. I want to relax more. And I say third category, but I just mixed four things into two categories. So uh, I got home, travel, health, wealth, and then My other like final kind of little pair was like relax and serve, which are also on opposite ends, similar to home and travel. Like I want to relax more. I'm not good at relaxing. Um, And I want to continue to serve in ways that I had planned on during my early retirement, which is taking on a lot of volunteer roles in my community, which I have done. And I'm actually, I've done it too well. I'm overly committed and I'm full and I, one of my intentions is that I will not commit to any new volunteer things. I will continue to do the ones that I have already committed to, which are multi-year terms in many cases. Uh, but that's it. I'm done. That's great. Yeah. So that's it. That's all my goals. That's all I got. <laughs> that was a nice long list. Well, you are yeah. going to have a busy 2023. I know. I'm really excited. I'm very, I really am. I was saying this at the beginning, like, I'm going into the year like super motivated Um, and not just to like get shit done, but like to have fun and relax and hang out with my kids. And like, I love afternoons when it quits getting so cold in Atlanta. Like I love afternoons after school when the kids kind of slowly come home at their different times and 
um, you know, we just play volleyball or goof around or walk home or just, you know, do whatever. Like, I, I love those times that I didn't used to get to have, especially with my kids. Um, and I just want to like, you know, continue to savor them and be present and enjoy them. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I have a question sure. for you. Let's talk about how we make these intentions stick. Like, like, what do you think, what are your kind of top thoughts and tips for not just our intentions, but everybody has some level of kind of goals or intentions. And I think it's super helpful to set them. There is meaning in setting goals for the ones that mean something to you, but the, the, you know, tougher part or the next level part is actually sticking to them and meeting them. And I just love, I mean, I got a lot of thoughts on this, but I'm just curious on your, you know, what, what are the things you think are important to kind of get people to follow through on their goals and intentions and kind of form good habits? Well, I think the first thing is that you need to have a really strong vision that you believe in, like an overarching goal and something that aligns with your values. If the values in your life are to spend time with your family, it's to be healthy so that you can live a long time. It's to be with your parents more as they get older. Like that is the kind of overarching vision that allows you to really stay focused on smaller goals that help you build up to it, at least from my perspective, which is why when we reviewed my intentions and goals for the year, they were very lofty. And so, you know, I think that I think the difference as you were going through your list, a lot of those I would agree with. They are things that I I focus on as well. But I in in my mind, they just kind of where they come as a product of setting very lofty goals. And I just sort of do them because that is how I build up to the larger ones. What about you? Yeah, I think, you know, I think what you're saying uh, is the why, right? It's just knowing your why, because yes, knowing your why, why you're doing all of this, it, it is a big thing that I think will help people just stick with their goals because it's it's hard to stick with any goal when you don't know your why, right? You just, you lose motivation, you lose interest. You know, the other quick things I would say would be, you know, an accountability partner. We talk about that a lot on here. We've been each other's, well, I say we've been each other's. I don't know if I've been your accountability partner, um, but even just like, you know, the the podcast, right? And like, we would not have, I don't, I think if either one of us had started this podcast on our own, I'm not sure we would have consistently done it every single week for three years straight. Definitely not. Um, we wouldn't have yeah. done it for three weeks. <laughs> um, I mean, I might have stuck with it for a little years. while, but uh, yeah, it would have been easy to skip a week. It would have been easy to be like, oh, I'm going to turn this into seasons and take the season off. Um, yeah. But having an accountability partner and it, it could be your spouse, a friend. It could be someone you met online through, you know, Instagram that you is in the Fi space and that, you know, you're at similar points in your life and, you know, don't be afraid to make a new friend online. Liz gets loaded and I are friends now. Have I said that yet? You talk about her every episode. We're friends IRL, just to be clear. Um, but you, that's an accountability partner, right? And, you know, it, it, again, it could be a friend from work. It could be someone you met online. It, there's a lot of options for it, but don't be afraid to propose that to someone else. And, it, you know, it's a, it's a friendship. It's an accountability partnership. There's a lot of uh, things it can turn into. There's a lot of habit tracking apps uh, way of life is one that I really like and use a lot. Um, it, read a good book on, you know, discipline and sticking with your habits. Atomic Habits. Um, Atomic book. Habits is a good book. What book was I listening to this year that was talking about habit stacking too? That's probably in Atomic Habits in like every book. Um, but I, I habit stacking is the, just this concept of like you, you build momentum over time, right? You can't set 20 new habits tomorrow and do them all. You got to like get into one habit actually form the habit and then start another habit, right? Stack them on top of each other. And then, you know, I think my last thought on just how to stick with our intentions and goals is continue to surround yourself with positive influences. And, you know, I, I use social media, like within the FI space or within FI or FIRE or personal finance, there's so many great positive influences online. Follow those people. You know, we talked about this when we were talking about like good peer pressure versus bad peer pressure. You know, put less of the bad stuff around you, like withdraw yourselves from those situations as much as you can and put yourself around more of the positive influences that are living the way 
you want to live. It's just like if you're trying to quit drinking. Unfortunately, it can sometimes be hard to hang out with a lot of people that are drinking, right? It's just puts the temptation in front of you all day. And so um may not be the best example, but I think it's a, a very good example of just continuing to surround yourself with other people who are trying to do the types of things you're doing um, and can be really good influences in your life. And then actually, I'd say there's one more tip. Okay. A good checklist goes a long way. Oh, uh, yeah. So like, right, you know, writing these things down, journaling. Uh, I joke about checklists because I was thinking about our, we have a financial checklist that we put out, I think in 2021. So two years ago, we've updated it for 2023. So you can find that on our website. We'll put a link in the show notes. But have like having the stuff you want to do written down and kind of, you know, to your point, Mike, earlier on like some high level stuff is probably more important than every single granular thing because it could be a lot. Like I, I literally was writing down some goals for 2023 on the plane the other day and it's like, there's a lot, you know, that wasn't even what I just flashed up to you on the screen was just like half of them. Um, but that can be an overwhelming list, you know, and it, it might be starting with a brain dump of everything you're thinking about, but then prioritizing the things that you really care about. We'd go through the same, you know, goal setting process at work um, and choosing the things where, you know, if you really get to the end of the year, what are the ones that you are most uh, concerned and are most important that you want to happen? You know, um, go back to the goal setting at work. It is one of my least favorite activities oh, because the purpose of it is to be able to measure performance of employees just to make it easier for for leaders to do so. It's like none of it really impacts the business. It's a, it stresses people out. Big waste of time. God, I, I hate that process. You know, um, I it's so funny how quickly you forget about things. Like I, I, we used to lead that process within our function a lot of different years, the annual planning process. And, you know, hate's a strong word, but let me put it this way. I don't miss it, Mike. I don't miss it. It, it was a lot of, it, it was a lot of like discussion and conversation and negotiating and, and stuff for something that, you know, it's actually, I'll just put it this way. It's fun to just sit down and do it with myself for 30 minutes. And I actually did this process with Greg. Um, on the plane. We did it on a plane ride home from San Diego in our first class seats that we got upgraded to. It was lovely. While we were sipping on champagne. At, uh, actually, we weren't drinking champagne. I don't like to drink when I fly. But it's a good... I forgot my point. Something about champagne <laughs> in first class. I don't understand what point you're making either. Yeah. I think you, were, you uh, don't miss goal setting at work. Oh, gosh. No. Every now and then... I, it's funny what you forget about so quickly. But when you just said that, I had a little bit of PTSD and I was like, oh my God, I do not miss that process. Um, and I'm really, it just further reinforced, like I'm really thoroughly enjoying early retirement. I kind of still feel bad when I say that with too much of like a twinkle in my eye because most of the people I'm around every day, minus Greg, still have jobs. So I, it's like, I feel bad being like, ooh, certainly feels nice to not have a job. I'm not saying I haven't earned it, but I still just like, I, I watch what I say around people that still have to go to work tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's going to be an amazing 2023. I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a great year. And I would like for you to cue in like black eyed peas. Let's get it started. If no, you could, I don't like, think we right can about afford now. the... Uh... We don't have the that. musical rights. You're right. And we'll get, we get pinged when, when you've done that. Like one time, I think I played something in the background mm -hmm. and we got pinged for some sort of like copyright something. And they were like, we're going to sue you. And I was like, sue me. I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. Anyways, point is you're not going to play Black Eyed Peas for me. All right. We could do some top three takeaways though. Sure. Right? Let's get it started. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number one, take some time to reflect on 2022. Uh, number two, take some time to set some intentions for 2023. Or or uh, if you're listening to this in 2026 in the future, hello from the past and uh, work on it that year. <laughs> yeah. The first two takeaways apply to any year you are listening yeah, to this. Yeah, you're right. Yep. <laughs> we hope this is a timeless episode. And number three, put some practices in place to create good habits around your intentions. Okay. Well, happy new year. Happy new year to you as well. We're going to get into the same debate every year where I decide how long it's appropriate to keep saying Happy New Year to people. 
But that was like an office debate because I kept seeing new people around the office. I don't see a lot of new people in this new yeah, life. I, I have. think this is the end of that debate for the rest of so, your life. Oh yeah. I'm gonna say happy new year to Greg and the kids, and then I'm gonna call it and you, and then I'm gonna call it a day. Okay, happy new year, Mike. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. If you have been challenged or inspired by anything you have heard, please rate and review the show. You can also subscribe to make sure that you never miss an episode. If you have any thoughts or questions, we'd love to hear from you. And you can leave us a voicemail or text us at 404-981-3370 or hit us up on Instagram. Okie dokie. I just keep wanting to say Happy New Year. I mean, here's to uh, everyone's intentions for the year. I hope you guys rock it this year. And yeah, bye, Mike. Bye, Maggie.